Welcome to the SOLIDWORKS for Creo Parametric Users series. This is intended for people who have a Creo background and maybe you need to use SOLIDWORKS as your main tool or you work in a multi-CAD environment and you need to work in SOLIDWORKS from time to time. I've launched SOLIDWORKS. Often when you do that, you are going to have the welcome dialog box open. And from this dialog box, you can create new documents like parts, assemblies, and drawings. Also, we have an open button in this dialog box. You have your recent documents and also your recent folders. And there are a bunch of resources that you can access from here. If you don't want to use it, you can close it. If you want to get it back, you can use the home icon in the upper left hand corner in order to do that. But I'm going to close it. On the right side of the screen, we have the task panes over here. Oftentimes, these will be open as well. Here we have it going to the 3D Experience Marketplace tab. It tells me that I need to do an update here. I just want to mention a couple of the different options that you have in here. If I click on the little house icon, that's another way to get to the resources. And the icon that looks like a library book, well, that is the design library for some models that you can access in here. If you click on the graphics area, that will end up collapsing it. Let's say I want to open something up. I can do that from the open icon, which uses the standard keyboard shortcut of control O. When I click on that, it goes to the last folder that I had accessed. Be aware that unlike Creo Parametric, there's no working directory that you are going to set. And I have a bunch of different objects in here. I can see that I've got some .prts, some .sld prts, which is a SOLIDWORKS part. And if I scroll through here, I can see I've got some step files and some log files, a bunch of different objects in here. If you want to narrow down the list, you have a filter in the lower right hand corner. You can see that you can filter to SOLIDWORKS files or documents. Also, you have assemblies, which typically end in .sldasm, drawings, which end in .sldrw, and parts, which end in .sldprt. In addition to that, you have a quick filter. I can go to parts that are in here. Also, we have an icon for drawings to filter down to that. We also have assemblies. And one nice little option that you have in here is that you can filter to top level assembly. So the way that SOLIDWORKS stores files is that you'll be able to figure out what is the highest level assembly if you have a bunch of models in a folder. But I'm gonna leave it here. Let's change to assemblies and turn off the quick filter for parts. I'm gonna grab an assembly that I want to open up. And rather than double click on it, I just single clicked on it to show you some of the different options that you have. If you're opening up an assembly, you can open up fully resolved. That's like bringing in the full detail, similar to the master representation in Creo Parametric. Here is a lightweight option, which is sort of like doing an automatic rep in Creo. And also there is an option in SOLIDWORKS for something called large design review mode, which is even faster than the lightweight representation. Also, there are options in here for using speed packs, which are another way of speeding up assembly retrieval, and also using large assembly settings. But I will leave it as resolved and then click the open button. And now it is retrieving the different components. When you do that, you'll notice that you get a dialog box. It opened really quickly, but it was showing me the progress how long it took to retrieve the last time and the progress as it was opening up the various different components. So now that I've got it open here on the screen, let's take a look at moving it around. And for the most part, it's the same as in Creo. If I want to spin this around, I will hold down the middle mouse button and you can see that I am now rotating it. If I want to zoom in and zoom out, the easiest way is by using a roller wheel as your middle mouse button, if you have that on your mouse, which most people do. Where you'll find a difference is when you want to pan it on the computer screen. In Creo Parametric, you use Shift and the middle mouse button. In SOLIDWORKS, you're going to use the 
control key and the middle mouse button. That's probably the thing that I mess up most when I'm transitioning between Creole Parametric and SolidWorks. Another common way that people use for changing the orientation of the model is by using from the drop down list over here something that is called the view selector. And right now, this is really slow animating on my computer screen. Be aware that if you go to your options when this finishes, uh, you have a bunch of different system options. And on the left, I can choose view. And here's some different controls that you have for uh, working on this. Here we have the view selector, but let's cancel out of there. Let me go back to the view selector. And again, it's going to show you what a lot of people call the view cube, which allows you to select a certain face that you want to view. Also, you have some of the different isometric orientations. So when this finishes, if I hover my mouse over one of the sides of this cube, you get a little preview of what you'll end up in the graphics window. Here I can go to another one, go to the different sides of the cube and take a look at the preview. And I decide, hey, I like this one. I will click on it with the left mouse button and the model changes to that orientation. Also be aware in SolidWorks, if you use the control key and numbers like numbers one through six, those are a bunch of predefined views that you have. So for example, if I do control two, I go to the back view, if I do control one, that is the front view, so on and so forth. Again, it's just control and a bunch of the different numbers. But let me go back to my view cube. And as I spin it around, that way I can get to the side that I want to see. Okay, let's take a look at a bunch of other parts of the interface. Here we have our ribbon, which is called the Command Manager in SolidWorks. And you'll notice that there is a little icon that looks sort of like a stoplight with red and green. This is the Rebuild icon. That's similar to Regenerate. The keyboard shortcut for Rebuild is Control B. And this will update any of the changed features in your model. If you want to do something called a force rebuild, that will rebuild all the different features in your model. And the keyboard shortcut for that is Control Q. So again, Control B, Control Q for rebuilding your model. Another thing that I want to point out, if you take a look at the different tabs in the command manager, here we have a sketch tab. So even though I have an assembly open, I can go right to the sketch tab. So it's a little different than Creole Parametric where you start a sketch and that puts you into sketch mode. Hey, we just have a tab that we will use in order to create a brand new sketch. But I cover some of the differences between sketching in SOLIDWORKS and Creole Parametric in another video. Let's continue on with our tour of the interface. Over on the left-hand side of the screen, we have something that's called the Manager pane, and it's a lot like the Navigator in Creole Parametric in that there are a bunch of different tabs with functions. And the first tab that we are on is something called the Feature Manager Design Tree, which again is a lot like the model tree in Creole Parametric. So you can see the object that you have open. We have a bunch of different folders. So for example, we have a history folder over here. This gives you access to sort of like the regeneration history of the model when you rebuild it. Also, if you have any MBD annotations, we've got a folder for that. We've got our planes like front, top, and right. There's also a default origin. And since this is an assembly, we have the different components. One big difference in assemblies between Creo Parametric and SOLIDWORKS is that you have a mates folder. The mates are created like assembly level features as opposed to creating constraints in Creo when you are assembling the component. A few other things to take notice of with this manager pane and the feature manager design tree. Over on the right hand side, there is a little flyout, and this will allow you to show different columns for 
the objects that you have in your tree. So for example, display mode, appearances, hide show, and transparency. You can collapse that as well. To take a look at just one of the other different tabs that we have, the third tab from the left is the configuration manager. So you can create different configurations of a part and also you can manage different display states. So configurations have a lot of analogies with family tables and also some of the different combination states that you create in Creo Parametric. But let's go back to the feature manager design tree. I'm going to go to the assembly tab and also show you a, another thing that you will see. Let's say I want to create a new kind of feature or object. Let's say I'm going to create a brand new mate. You can see the little video or GIF or whatever that shows you how this process works. When I actually click on this, it's going to open up something called the property manager. And the property manager is a lot like a dashboard in Creo Parametric, except it opens up in the manager pane and it's obviously vertical as opposed to horizontal. But the thing I want to point out about being in a property manager, when you do that, you actually get a flyout feature manager in the graphics area. If I click on the little expand icon, here we have our feature manager design tree, but it's just in the graphics area. That allows me to select out of here when I have a property manager open. But let's say I want to get out of the operation, I will just click on the red X and that gets rid of the property manager for that operation. And I'm back on my feature manager design tree. Okay, a few other things to take a look at. Here I have a component, let me left click on it. And when I do that, I'm going to get a pop-up toolbar, which is very similar to the mini toolbars that you have in Creo Parametric. Similarly, if I right click on an object, I will get both the pop-up menu plus an additional menu of commands that you can execute. Whenever you're working in SOLIDWORKS and you right click and you get something, hey, just like in Creo Parametric, I recommend you take a moment to read through the different commands in order to familiarize yourself with them. But I'm using the open icon in order to open up this particular part in its own separate window. Here you can see its feature manager design tree. But I just want to point out some of the different tabs that you have in the command manager. So right now I am on the features tab where obviously you can create a variety of different features. Here we have the sketch tab in order to create brand new sketches. Again, it's not like a sketch mode. You're just going to go to the sketch tab and I've got another tab over here for creating non-solid surface features and also a sheet metal tab. So again, take a look at the different tabs that you have. Take a look at the different commands that you have on those tabs. So let's say that I want to close this and go back to my assembly window. There are a couple different ways to do that. If you take a look in the upper right hand corner of the graphics area, you have a little close icon available. I close that and it takes me back to the assembly. Hey, you'll notice that I've got my feature manager design tree open in the graphics area as well. I can close that flyout uh, design tree if I want to or rather collapse it. And another way that you can close this is by going to your menus at the top of the screen. You'll notice that you have a bunch of different drop down menus. Every command that you can get to from the ribbon is also available from these different drop downs, but the drop downs contain even more commands than you have in the ribbon or what SOLIDWORKS calls the command manager. Anyhow, I just want to point out that you have a close icon from the file menu and from the window drop down menu, you have a close all command. The last thing I want to mention in Creo Parametric, when you close an object, it is still in your computer's RAM. You have to use the file erase not displayed or file erase current command if you want to get those objects out of your computer's RAM. SOLIDWORKS does not have the same concept. When you close something, I'm not going to save this, 
when you close something, it is going to be out of your RAM. So another little difference between SOLIDWORKS and Creo Parametric. So anyhow, I hope this provides some sort of introduction to SOLIDWORKS for people who are more familiar with Creo Parametric. Please stay tuned to the rest of the series.